Hi everyone, this is Miss Janelle from the Ella Johnson Library, and today for Art Explorers, we're going to talk a little bit about nature drawing. Now, before we get started, what you're going to need to do is find somewhere outside that you can sit to do your drawing. It's a little bit windy, so I'm going to be doing mine inside today, but you need to be able to observe nature while we're doing this. So, since I had to be inside due to the wind, I'm going to be using my houseplant, which is a begonia, to do my drawing. If it's rainy or if it's too windy, you can take something indoors and draw. Just make sure that you have a plant that you could use because what we're gonna be doing is observation. So observational drawing is just that. It requires you to study something so that when you're drawing it, you're drawing it as true to life as possible. When artists start out, this is what they do for a long time in school, is observational drawing. Whether it's plants or people or still lifes, which a still life is just a group of objects that you put together and you draw exactly what you see. So for nature drawing, we're gonna concentrate on plants and botanicals. So you're gonna to wanna to draw some sort of plant, a flower, some leaves from a tree, something like that. So I have my begonia. And you can see there's a lot of texture in this. There's a lot of odd shapes. So I'm going to put this next to me and observe it. You want to take a moment to really look at your object so that when you start drawing, you know what you are going to do. The best thing to do is to look at it and break down the different shapes in your object. So if we look at my begonia, you can see there's a lot of triangles and some rectangular shapes and some ovals. So that's what I'm gonna really concentrate on are all those different shapes. The next important thing, anytime you're doing observational drawing is to have good paper, good light, and good pencils. Now, these may all look like the same pencil to you, but they are not. Drawing pencils are unique. The graphite in them, which is the part that's the gray part, are all different kinds of hardnesses and softness. So this pencil is an H, it says it right there on that end. And this is a hard pencil. So I'm just gonna give you an example. Pretty hard. This is a 6B. So this is gonna be a little bit softer. It's good for shading. You can see it comes out a little bit darker. This is an F. This is something that's closer to your standard pencil that you would draw with in school. And then I did bring a regular pencil because it has a nice eraser on it. And I wanted to show you that a regular pencil does the trick too. Now we have all of these fancy pencils because we want to create different textures. We want to create hardness and softness and shading and light. And that's what all of these pencils help us do is to create those different things. So I'm gonna use a 6B to shade, right? And I'll use my F to outline. And I might use the H to do a little bit of detail work. But if you just have a plain old pencil, you can do that too. And you can control it by pressing really lightly or really hard. So sometimes you can do cool things with really basic tools. Just remember that you have to practice and it's all about the control of the pencil. So the other thing you're going to need is an eraser. An eraser is your best friend. No line with a pencil is ever permanent. Remember that because you're going to feel very intimidated when you're drawing. You're going to feel like you can't do it, but no artist has ever drawn anything on the first try. Never, never happened. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of control and a whole lot of erasing. So don't be afraid if you have to erase a bunch. Maybe you have to start with a new piece of paper. That's totally fine. It's all about practice, 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 practice. So I have been looking at my plant and I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna draw some basic shapes and then I'll probably go in and do some line work and then some texture. So I'm gonna get started, here we go.
well, you can tell that I have done some different kinds of line work. There's some light, there's some dark. So the next step you're wanna do, gonna wanna do is go in there and refine it. So you're gonna wanna work on the shaping, work on the light. So where it's darker, you're gonna want the lines to be darker. So you're gonna push a little bit harder or use a 6B pencil. And if you want it to be lighter, you'll use a light touch or maybe use an F or an H pencil. And then you're gonna to wanna to use a B pencil to do shading. And any sort of detailed line work that you want crisp, you want a harder pencil to do that. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is just go in, clean up the lines, maybe draw back over some or lighten some up. And then you're really gonna pay attention to how the light is hitting your plant because that's gonna determine what kind of shading you're gonna do. And when I say shading, it's not just drawing. Shading in drawing isn't just like coloring it in. It could also be things like stippling, which is a series of dots. You can do some crosshatch work. That'll create texture and it'll create shading. You can also just do some quick lines like this. So you're seeing that we can create texture and lightness and darkness and we're not just coloring it in like we would with a crayon or a colored pencil or a marker. There's a little bit more control and there's a little bit more texturizing than you would with a crayon or pencil, colored pencil or a marker. So practice with some of the different kinds of ways that you can shade and see which one you like the best. So for mine, I have a lot of light to dark actions. So I'll probably stick more to doing kind of uh, quick lines, maybe a little bit of cross hatching as well. I also have some dots on the tops of the leaves. So I'll play around with doing a little bit of stippling on top of that. So I'll try to use a bunch of different techniques and really concentrate on creating a light to dark situation. So this is the bottom of the leaf. I'm going to want to So I'm creating lines that are closer together to create more of a dark area. And then as it comes outward, I'm going to loosen them up and do a lighter touch. So we just kind of keep going back and forth and back and forth. And like I said, you're going to want to use your eraser. Clean it up a little bit. It's going to be a lot of back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And always make sure that you keep looking at your plant. The biggest thing that happens when we're doing observational drawing so we just keep staring at our drawing and we forget to look back at the object that we're drawing. And so when you do that, your mind is filling in the gaps instead of looking at the object and going, okay, dark, 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 light. Instead, you're just going, okay, it goes dark to light and you just do it. So you always have to make sure that you keep looking back at the object. You should look at your object more than you look at your paper. In fact, if you can train yourself to look at your object while you're drawing, you'll be able to more accurately depict that object because we're not filling in the blanks in our mind. So keep going, keep practicing. And like I said, 
The eraser is your friend. And it's going to be a lot of back and forth for your drawing, and that's okay. That's what art making is. Practice and keep going. I hope that you guys have a lot of fun. Go outside, look at all the different plants you can draw. Try drawing something simple. Try draw something really hard. See what you can do. And just keep all your drawings in the little notebook that you got from the library and see how much you improve with each one. I hope you had fun. I hope to see you at the library and have a great day.